Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you again for stopping into my channel. Uh, we got a couple things going on. Uh, we have a check engine light on the 98 LS swap. Uh, this is my fault. I knew it was probably going to happen. I took the chance and it's biting me. I bought cheap eBay knock sensors for this thing. So we have new ones to put in there. And while I have the intake manifold off, I decided I'm going to try and do my own four corner steam vent. Those of you that have been around for a while know that I did it on my black truck when I swapped the six liter into. But I bought you know the, the fancy expensive trick flow kit, which was over 140 bucks, I believe. What I bought for this thing cost me less than 40. So that is a, if it works, it's gonna be a huge plus. I'm pretty sure it will. I don't see why it wouldn't, but I'll show you the parts real quick and show you what I got going. So as a lot of you know, the trucks come with a front crossover tube. Let me see if I can find one. Well, I can't find the other one. I have these ones already put together. But essentially, it just goes from head to head. I'll show you some of the steam ports. I have a couple sets of heads over there. I'll show you what they do. But what I got going on is these are both front crossover tubes, but I found out that the front crossover tube does fit in the back of the head. So what I was going to do is I just got some quarter inch coolant hose, which was only like nine or ten bucks, three feet of it run it under the manifold up to the front which I got a T which was only well it was a three pack four bucks so you do the math now another crossover tube a little bit of hose and then we're gonna plumb it into the radiator hose the upper one with this 1 8 pipe deal to a quarter inch barb and then this is an inch and a quarter hose we'll just cut the radiator hose Slip this on either side and then plumb it in through there. So if this works, this is gonna be a pretty easy setup. Pretty cheap, you can get all this stuff. Okay, not all of it. These three fittings, you'll have to get online or in the store. These you can get at a junkyard, that is part store. Cheap, simple stuff. Here's a set of 5.3, 4.8 heads. You see right there is a steam vent. So these heads have holes drilled to the coolant or the coolant passages to let steam out. That way you can fill the head and the block completely with coolant. That way you don't have any air pockets because air does not cool very well, especially when it's just sitting there. So these are designed to get air up and out of the block and get it out somehow. So get the intake manifold off. That I probably won't show you because that's not really too exciting. Go over, I'll just go over it real quick. Disconnect your fuel lines back there. Take any of this up and out of the way. Disconnect the wires, get this out. And then it's a couple, I believe, eight millimeter bolts, five on each side. And it just comes right out. Um, because this is a swap, my, I kind of rerouted the wire harness so it won't be that hard for me. But they are under there. You can't really see them, but there's two. So, kind of a flaw in the design, but it's really the only way to get to them is that way. So. I'm thinking we'll run the coolant line to here, cut it, splice our little part in, and off we go. I will drain a little bit of the coolant out. That way the coolant level, you know, is below, you know, the lowest, whatever the lowest point is, and then, yeah. Um, before I get too far into this, I'm going to show you I got the intake off. I'm going to take the opportunity to give my friend 454 Chewy a shout out. This is one of his ported throttle bodies he did for me. This is a service he offers. He actually ported this intake manifold as well so he can port match the inside of it, get rid of any of the ridges and everything out of the way. So it flows nice and good. If you're more curious about that, go check out my last video. At the end of this video, I'll link it so you can just click on and go to it. I went over all of it pretty much. Um, he does a really good job. He, he's really good at porting things, frees up a lot of horsepower for not a lot of money. So it's a very good bang for your buck. I go check it out. Now we'll get back to it. New knock sensors are in. See what I mean? So I'll grab the light real quick so I can show you guys the back. Hold on. Should have thought about that before I grab the camera. But see here I just have the coolant hoses just crossed over. Um, usually they go through the throttle body and back up to the radiator. In the truck that they normally came in, in the back, we're just capped off. So we're going to take those off, put the new ones on, run the hose up to the front. Um, your truck. This is one I bought offline. This is for a, a car. Different spacing on the accessories. Ended up just hooking them together. 
but your truck will come with the front one so you'll just need to get one for the back and then the hose so you only need to get one of those from a pick and pull so yeah and this would be a good opportunity to bypass the throttle body you see it goes through there you don't need that that's garbage kind of made a mess drain the coolant but that's not a big deal got the crossover to no sorry steam ports all unhooked make sure your gasket is gone clean the surface up nice and good I think now we're ready to put them in I really hope that bin clears the uh, oil pressure since I just thought of that just now so if it doesn't then we might be screwed look at that it's like it was made to go there it bends around the oil pressure sensor and the uh, cam position sensor so now we got it on there I'm gonna you know, take it back up put the gaskets on and tighten her down all right so we got everything plumbed back in so I used the it's ITC billet is a company they make a one and one quarter inch barb and it has a one eighth pipe tap in it you screw that little guy in there and that's where I plumbed this back into so the back crosses over to the one hose comes up here to this T front crosses over up through this hose so it's going to push any steam out to the highest point up through here we'll bleed there back through you know, through the system whatnot so I guess now make sure our intake runners are clean make sure we didn't get anything in them probably a good idea to stuff rags down them or tape them off I'm an idiot and didn't do it so we're gonna double check make sure nothing's in there okay I believe we are done everything buttoned back up hopefully I got everything plugged back in this is kind of the nerve-wracking part you never know if you miss something or mess something up so go and fire it up and see what happens oh but first we gotta clear the codes so we know that we fixed the problem don't want to get demonetized anyway we're gonna clear the code somebody commented a while ago saying that they liked my swap because the check engine light wasn't on but then sarcastically said they knew that it didn't work well it does work um, it is fully functional everything on this truck is fully functional except for the fuel gauge which I still haven't tracked down why that doesn't work but we're gonna find out Knock sensor one. So we're clearing the codes. They were all for knock sensors. So hopefully we fixed the problem. All right, no more check engine light. isn't hard to hook up it's just the computer just supplies a ground to the light in the dash so there's one wire going out through the firewall which was already on the truck you just splice it into the LS computer and then bam you're done no emission related DTCs cool so it's not complete because we cleared it and it has to go through you know X amount of cycles before it figures out if it's fixed or not but, yep next thing we're going to do, not in this video, but at some point, I want to get a manual oil pressure gauge and measure the oil pressure. Make sure it's really not that high. Because if it's that high, that's a problem. I think it's not, because if you turn it off... It rests at like 10 PSI, 11, 12, let's see. 20 so it's it's not at zero you, you well is what I'm saying so I think it's just reading a little bit high because of the gauge but oh well whatever so it looks like we got everything put back together correctly I need to add a little more coolant I didn't quite have enough so I'll get more seems like I never have enough coolant but that's gonna do it thank you for stopping in um, check me out on Instagram it's in the switch list 6.0 um, we are very close to hitting 5,000 subscribers on here and on my U Instagram. 
I'll be doing another giveaway. This time it will be a free throttle body porting from 454 Chewy, the guy I mentioned earlier. In second place, we'll get a $50 gift card to Summit Racing Equipment, which is where I buy most of my stuff. So, that is pretty much how you do the a cheap, you know, junkyard style four corner steam vent. We'll run it after we fill the coolant all the way back up, make sure we don't have any leaks, but that is really here nor there. But again, you know, if you're new to the channel, consider some subscribing. You see, we got a 5.3 here, we got a whole bunch of LS stuff going on. This is going to be for my wife's 65. We're going to LS swap that, do some engine work to this. Got it torn apart. It looks like it's in pretty decent shape, but we're going to go, what, 30 over, something like that. Make it a 5.7. That's a whole bunch of stuff for the front end of this thing. Like I said, I'm going to be rebuilding it. This is going to be going for sale shortly. I guess <laughs> I keep saying, like I said. I want to get all the bugs worked out so it was just like this truck came stock with this engine. It is not a perfect truck by any means, but it's a great truck for someone. But yeah, that is going to be it for now. Stay tuned for a whole bunch more. Take care, and I will see you guys next time.